Welcome to another Guess the ELO episode. We have these two random players from a live ranked game. I don't know any of these players and I have admitted my chat so I've got no way to really get spoiled on how much their ELO is. And I'm gonna attempt to guess the ELO by casting the game and seeing how they play, what they're doing well and what they can improve on. And then at the end of the game, I gotta guess how strong the players are and what's the ELO of the game. And I have to guess within a hundred radius. So if they're 1301 and I guess uh, let's say 1200, if they're 1301, I'm incorrect. Uh, but if I guess 1300 and they're 1360, then I'm correct. And I have to guess it for just one of the players to win the round of Guess the ELO. And that's my personal game. And for you guys, it's going to be a little bit of educational commentary and hopefully some entertaining uh, laughs and uh, nice moments, pretty much. Okay, so we have in the red here, we have Mansa Donnerful, and he's playing as the Mines in red. And so far, his scouting has been pretty clean. Like, he's using a couple sheep, and he's scouting with... Ooh, waypoint scout on the sheep, which is totally fine. No waypoint with the scout, which is pretty good. I like this. So that's our red player and our blue player here in the top. We've got the Koreans, Mr. D-Y-L Dybul. And he's playing in blue as the Koreans, like I said, in the top of the map here. Uh, let's take a look at the maps real quick. So we got the Korean player with pretty... Bad map here, actually. His front is very open. In fact, let me see if I can actually pull up Capture Rage for this. I think that could be pretty cool. I know you guys actually like Capture Rage. Let me see if I can make it work here. And uh, 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 connect to the game. Let me see if I can actually do this one here. I did manage it. It does look a little bit grainy and choppy, though. It looks so choppy. Let me see if I can actually fix this. So graphics, it looks very choppy. I think regular is better, eh? Yeah, okay. I tried. I don't know what's wrong with my capture ridge. All right, sorry about that. Anyways, uh, let's continue the cast, and I'm gonna just minimize chat again. All right, so let's take a look at the builds we're going for. Like I said, Blue's map is kind of sketchy, for sure. He needs to kind of sort his stuff out. And over in the red side of the map, uh, for red player, his map is also pretty open. So I think we're gonna see a lot of aggression here in the early game, and I just wanna see how exactly they go about this. Let's see the deal there here for red player. Pulls in the deer quite clean. He also lured in a deer as well earlier. And he is missing two sheep, I believe. He's missing two sheep out here. Uh, thank you, Ima Imaki, for the prime for six months. And thank you, Fidel, for the prime. Yo, we need to bet on these for potato points. If I have a bot on the stream, he can definitely set that up for you guys. If they feel like it. Really nice lure here. Okay, uh, it's not bad. He is really trying to get under the TC. That's actually not bad, honestly. That's pretty solid. Uh, right away, that puts me above a thousand. Like, just that one lure just puts me right above a thousand. And looks like Blue is going to be picking up an early Loom here. Which is interesting. I'm not quite sure why he's doing that. Ooh, I don't know about that mill, actually. Usually your mill has to be touching the berries, and you don't want it to be... You don't want it to have any space there. So that's not looking too hot right off the bat here. It's very hot, by the way, in my room. Hold on, I gotta close my heater. For once it's hot, I gotta open my window. I'm actually boiling. Sorry about that. I have so many pauses so far, but we should be good here. Alright, we should be here, good here to cast the rest of this. Okay, so blue right off the bat. Second boar coming in. Some idle time and some really sloppy moves on the berries. So, Although I was impressed by that red there, I think... Uh, Oh, Blue's also going to be running into the TC, and uh, Red is playing really, really well so far. His reactions have been on point, his lures have been pretty solid, he also got an deer, and his scouting has been on point as well. Look at that clean scouting from Red. No holes in his map, he found all his golds, all his stones, he doesn't really, he doesn't really need to see anything else on his area, and now he's going to go scout his opponent. So take a lesson from Red here, guys, he's really done a good job of scouting the map. Over on the, the other side for Blue here, I want to see Blue's expiration. He might have just got a little bit unlucky as he goes for a big wall. He also has really nice scouting at his base, no doubt. And he also went to the opponent's base and just got unlucky, ran straight into the TC. So that 14, happens. baby. Keep the great content going. Also, best of luck yeah, on Red happens. Bull. Uh, yo, Banjo Castle, thanks for the 14 months, man. I really appreciate that. Thanks for, the, thanks for your support, bro. Thank you very much, and thanks for the luck as well. Big walls from the blue player right off the bat, and I did say his map was quite open, so it's going to be a, a tough task to wall the whole thing up. But he is Koreans against Mayans, and generally speaking, I think Koreans have a really good matchup against Archer Sivs. The thing is, Mayans do have that Eagle transition, which absolutely dominates Koreans. 
So that's the only thing he's got to really be careful of. And you know, if you're the Korean player here, you could have you could play hand cannon against the eagle. Oh, walled it in. I lose my mind. House, house here, palace it here, and it's walled in. Uh, he's not gonna go for it, dude. Reddit idling has got a lot though. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> um. Yeah, okay, that was a lot of idle time. Red, what were you up to? Okay, he was also, he was sorting out his eco at home though. He's up 22 pop here, and it looks like he's gonna go for a standard archer rush. Generally speaking with mines, you wanna do 23 pop though, cause he's gonna go for the wall now. Okay. Yeah guys, this is looking a bit of a, bit of a lower level game, but not too low. Like I, I'm thinking like low to mid level here. Um, so I, I would say anywhere from like 900 to 1100 so far is where I'm at in terms of ELO. They have some really good plays and and you know what? They're both setting up their map in a logical way. You know what I mean? Red has walled towards the TC. He's walled that right side. And Blue's going for a different approach. He's going to full wall his base. But that's also a pretty viable approach to this game as well. And he's going to go four to gold now. As he makes a few militia, he's going to go for a minute arm rush. It is very late though. It's going to be hitting around like 11.30, so it's kind of late. I, I, I don't think it's going to do damage. Meanwhile, Red actually hits a really fast uptime, and he's going to know straight archers. So I often get asked why I don't recommend men at arms at lower levels, and I don't know what level these guys are, so don't get offended. But I would say that this is a prime example of why I don't like men at arms at lower level. Because they come in so late, so like the militia are just now arriving at the enemy base. It's 11 minutes, and he only now wants to upgrade to men at arms. So it's actually a very late rush, whereas the archer player already has the archer range coming down. It's gonna be a very easy defense. I want to go all in Bourbon Knights in early to mid castle age. What should I do? Wall it in, pass it, pass it. If I go scouts, it often means they have pikes ready for He's my trying. knights. What if I go archers? Yeah, Would Red is good? smurfing here. Red is absolutely smurfing. That was a really good defense. He actually did an extra wall to try to make the militia go closer to the TC. And now he's just gonna go ahead and finish his archer range. That was a really good defense. And like I said, the men at arms from blue all of a sudden are doing absolutely nothing. So this is why I really recommend practice the pure archer build order. It's so much stronger. And if Red was even a bit more confident, he wouldn't need to wall the the, the gold because he would know that it's two militia, both are half HP. You can just fight back with villagers. We have a question here from a viewer, new computer, thanks for the five dollars. He says he wants to go for Berber uh, Berber knights in early. Uh, all in Berber Knights in early to mid castle age. What should I do in feudal age? If I go scouts, it often means they have pikes ready for my knights. What if I go archers? Would it be good? So if you want to go for an all in, generally scouts is the best plan. And even if they have a few spears out, your knights should still be able to overrun them. So that's one uh, option. But if you want to go for like a purely like cheese strategy, what you can do is open with a drush, full wall your map and go FC and then open up with two stable knights and then try to 1TC push them from there. And then in castle age, you just add farms or send people to gold. So you can do Drush FC if you're scared of the scout opening, but generally speaking, scouts into knights is the best opening. And even if they have three to four spears, you're gonna easily be able to clean those up with your knights. And even if they have 10 pikemen, 10 knights will still beat that. Really, really good defense here from Red, who fights back with his villagers, which is exactly what you should be doing here. This is fantastic from Red, absolutely fantastic. Take, yo, take a lesson here from Red. He, he did a really good job going for a archer build order, standard stuff, he saw the militia come in, he didn't panic, got some good damage to the TC, and then just fought off the remaining militia with his villagers as he should do. Now the next step for him is to move out with his archers, and I will say his build order isn't perfect. He, he definitely could use like, I don't know, maybe one less on wood and an extra farm, because he's floating a little bit of wood, and he has 11 on wood, usually it's just the 10. And he could be doing things a little bit faster, like seeding farms faster. So it's not perfect, but I definitely see the skeleton of a build order. Eight on gold, you know, with mines, you know, you usually only want seven. But he's got 11 on wood, you know, cl very close to 10, which is what you're supposed to do. Three on berries, needs four, but it's okay. So he's got very, very similar to a proper build order, um, and a perfect build order, in fact. He's just a little bit off, but it's still very good. So I'm, I'm very pleased with how Red's playing this. He sees his opponent now going for a couple skirms and archers. And remember, Koreans do get free blacksmith upgrade in terms of defense for archers. So I think for for the red player here, he needs to get his upgrades in ASAP. So he's gonna go with fletching first as he should, and then probably just pick up archers uh, archer uh, armor after that. Engagement can happen. Okay, both players engaging. The two scrims from red coming out. I like that. All right, now let's see the micro here. So Red should definitely not back down. Red should absolutely not back down. He needs to put pressure because he's got so much more in his arsenal, in his army. 
and he's producing a lot more constantly as well. Like Red's builder is fantastic here. Like if you can just if you can just learn from this game, and if your mines you you go with seven on gold instead of the recommended eight because you have cheaper archers, and if he goes a little bit later to gold, which is also recommended in the builders that I put out, for example. I think he can have a really, really clean start, but even as is, he's still doing a much better job than Blue, even though Blue himself is also following a pretty reasonable builder himself. So this game is definitely pretty decent. Both players know their, know their early game to, uh, to a decent degree. I, I, I would say around 1200 actually right now. I think this is a good 1200 game, honestly. There's a lot of things going right. Even though there's some sloppy stuff in the early game, a lot of things are going right right now for both players. And I like what I'm seeing. All right, red player's gonna make his way to the top here. Probably start hammering down one of these uh, one of these walls. All right, and meanwhile, blue's gonna be attacking him, so red's gonna need to do some proper defense here. And blue is running away from this army, but he should absolutely not be running away from it. He can have dominated that fight. That is such a big mistake. That is a huge mistake from blue. He could have. He one-shot the archer, that was so weird. He could have easily cleaned up these archers and pressured the gold. And then back home he can defend with a few skirmishers. Big mistake from blue to go back there. Wow. That was really weird, eh chat? He could have easily put, put pressure there. So in that case, you just continue. Like, if you make your way to your opponent's base, the last thing you want to do is run back. The last thing. If you want to run back, you have to make that decision before you get to your opponent's base. So now he runs back and he's actually gonna find no damage. He's not gonna be able to kill Red's army. Unless he does intercept it like, like so. But even still, I prefer him if he just attacked instead. Because now he's trading downhill. And even this isn't the most favorable. Yeah, like Red's taking a good trade here. And this is a, cra a crazy misplay from Blue. I, I do not expect him to misplay like that. And he's missing fletching by the way. So missing upgrades. He will probably still win the fight because he has more skirmishers. But I mean, Red's doing a really good job microing the a few skirmishers that he's down. And he's gonna run away. That was a good fight for red overall, definitely. Definitely a good fight for red overall. Deletes a house by the looks of things. And he's got a lot of archers now. And he's up to castle. Dude, red is insane actually. Very, very good gameplay here. Red's up to castleage. He's gonna hit like a 22 minute castleage here with mine. 22 and a half maybe. And blue player, well, he's on his way as well. Getting wheelbarrow, 18 farms or 18 on food. And it's probably gonna be four on berries. And oh no, there's no berries. Yeah, 20 farms. Sounds good. All right, so now red player needs to be careful. The only thing I'd advise for red player right now is just to stay behind his walls since he doesn't have that many skirmishers. You don't want to take too many fights. However, oh, he's hitting armor here. I swear this guy's using my builds. Like this is this is really good. Or if he's not using mine, he's he has the right build. I mean, the build I I use and I put out is just the one that's the standard and good for everyone. So all I want to say is the conclusion is he's doing exactly what I recommend and exactly what most pros would recommend. Horse color coming in now. Gold mining coming in now. This is absolutely fantastic. And he's even going to send a villager forward to do a siege workshop, potentially. This guy is really, really solid. He has his fundamentals down quite well. I'm actually now thinking 1300 right now. Instead of the 1200 and previously 1100 that I was considering in the Dark Age. Red is playing really well this game. Alright, Blue's going to come forward again. And Blue's doing a good job of pressuring. He does have fletching now. And, and Red, again, Red needs to not fight this. Because he's down a lot of skirms. You don't want to fight this, and this is a common mistake I see. A lot of people ask me, what do I do against skirmishers when I'm playing archers? And the answer is simply wait for crossbow. Crossbows will dominate skirmishers in the feudal age very easily. So now, he did a good job. You disengage, you go crossbow, and now you can easily switch to siege if, you, if your opponent has a lot of skirmishers. Or you can simply just one-shot them if he doesn't have elite skirm, which is a very expensive upgrade to get. So... Blue is still trying to pressure, probably buy himself some time. It's a good idea, because you can keep your opponent's army at his own base, because you still have the scrims, which is a counter unit. And again, Red should just wait for crossbow. He's fighting a little bit prematurely here, but he does have the Barking Arrow. Taking the hill now will still land a really, really good fight. And especially with crossbow kicking in now, this is a very reasonable trade for Red player. And I don't think Blue is going to be too unhappy with this either, though, because Blue is trading against crossbows. So I think overall both players would be kind of happy with this. Red killed more units, but Blue didn't take any damage to his eco from Castlage pressure. So like I guess I think both players would be pretty happy with this. Maybe even Blue winning that trade overall. Yeah, I think Blue won that trade overall, but I don't think Red should be too disappointed. All right, TC on the stone and main gold. 
Um, I want to see a, I want to see a TC outside of your walls though. Like right here, a TC would be fantastic. Give yourself some coverage on the wood and expand to another gold. A TC out here on this wood line would be pretty reasonable as well. And deleting the lumber camp to make a TC in this area is also the last reasonable option that I can see, to be honest. Although this is probably the least favorable because there's a hill out here that can be easily pushed in onto your TC. So probably the best play for the next TC is just to have it on this, on this wood line out here. All right, so we're going to have Archers and Skirms mixed from the Korean player, who's also picking up Thumb Ring, which is a tech I don't really recommend usually, but I do like the fact that he wants to spend his resources. I don't recommend that you get Thumb Ring too early in Castlage because it usually slows down your eco, and it's not the most impactful tech for hit and run. It's only really good when both players patrol into their army, and I don't think that happens very often, especially at the top tier play, or even in like the intermediate level where players know how to hit and run uh, quite well. So... You know, definitely Thumb Ring early. It's, it's only good if you really are floating resources and, and you want to spend them. And he's even picking up hand card now. So he's really just trying to spend his resources, which I, I respect. All right, third TC came down on the wood line. He deleted a Lumber Camp for it, which is not the worst thing ever. So now the Mind Player, I think what he should be thinking about right now is adding in a Seed Shop because he doesn't mind playing Crossbow versus Crossbow. But if the Korean player mixes in some uh, Elite Skirmisher, the Mind player will need some Siege. So the next step, Siege Shop, if he feels like he doesn't really need it, a good alternative is just a University for Ballistics. Both of those are really reasonable options. You need those buildings for Imperial Age anyways, right chat? So it makes sense to transition into one of those buildings as soon as you can afford it. Right? So that should definitely be his next step here. Siege Shop. Or university very logical you can also get a monastery and start picking up some relics but i do feel like the siege is a bit more relevant than a, a couple relics in your back pocket to be honest i have some wrist pain actually in my right hand i'm not really a fan of it a lot of wrist pain here gotta do some wrist stretches maybe we'll, we'll, we'll work on that we'll work on that all right, thumb ring coming out from the red player. I think this is a more reasonable time since he has quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of mass here. So thumb ring coming in for both players now. Blue already has it down. So we'll see some pretty big fireworks here if they both engage and both clash armies. One of them goes down. So I like that. Yo, blue's been very aggressive all game. You know, can we? Let's appreciate the fact that blue's been pushing quite consistently throughout these games here, and he's not making it easy for red. Uh, you know, to to just have his way with with, with his eco and stuff. But the one thing I will criticize from Blue is the fact that he goes aggressive, but he often just runs back. And now he's into a castle in the, kind of the middle of nowhere. I'd almost like this castle to be forward, to be honest. I feel like that gives, that gives him the best chances to win. He's 1 TC. He's so far behind. Yeah, this castle almost has to be forward if he wants to have a chance to win, and it's not. So I really think that Red should have a pretty good, um, pretty good game from here on out. The next danger is the War Wagons coming out, and if War Wagons come out, the best counter for mines right now would probably be Elite Skirmisher. Just go Elite Skirm and deal with them. The fourth town center from Red is coming out, so he's right off the bat much better macro, much better eco than uh, the, the blue player here. Who's invested quite a bit into the military, not a lot into his economy. My water bottle fell. War wagons coming out, and this unit is quite, quite beastly. Um, we'll have to see how he, you know, how much success he lands with that. Blue's putting some pressure on the gate here, which makes sense. From what I've seen, Blue's gonna run back after he breaks the gate. He's gonna run back. Oh, he's has to go forward. Okay, he's gonna meet the army of red though, and he should probably, you know, go back at this point. Just definitely no shame in that. But yeah, he's he has been a very cautious player. Yeah, he's just gonna go all the way back now, which is fine. It's not bad, but I, I really just wish he put a bit more pressure because. He definitely has to make something happen if he's on one TC. Although he is trying to add TCs of his own, he does have the War Wagons, which have a lot of Pierce Armor, so they're quite good against crossbows in general. Red is securing the side of the map, also getting a University. Very, very cool play from Red. House and Stonewalling the top side. And it's going to really secure Wood, Gold, and a couple Town Centers. Keep that safe. House wall on that left side as well. Red is keeping himself very, very safe. And meanwhile, Blue is going to try and be... You know, trying to attempt at cracking Red's base and seeing if you find any damage. But Red's been playing very solid on defense so far. It has almost enough for a castle, by the way. So it is looking very good for Red here, who is technically the lead skirmisher. He's doing all the right steps, fellas. He's doing all the right steps. He saw the wagons, and he's going to just tech the lead skirmisher, which is absolutely correct. The lead skirmisher does really well against wagons in general. Yes, 
four town centers now. Ballistics immediately on the way here. This is just fantastic, man. It brings a smile on my face to see someone like Red playing well. Because I don't think he's necessarily the best player. Like, I, I don't think he's like an 1800 player. He's making a lot of mistakes here, especially with, you know, some micro. You know, you don't need to lose, you know, five or six units there. You definitely could pull those guys back. But he's doing enough right to have pretty reasonable success in these games. And he seems like a consistent player. He seems like a consistent player. I can imagine doing this kind of gameplay pretty much every game and having reasonable success with it. Alright, he's trying to force down a castle here. I think Red thinks he's in more trouble than he actually is. Because he's taking kind of some weird engagements here. Uh, forcing down a, a, a castle and stuff. Although this engagement is good, he should have waited for scrims to come out. He lost like 20 possibles before for no reason. But now he's going to eventually win the fight. And he's got ballistics so he can easily push back. Castle is decent but he, he kind of forced it down. Uh, he was, I, I can tell he's a little bit scared, you know, they don't want to lose ground here. And now it's Blue's turn to answer for his crimes, and uh, he'll lose a few of his crossbows, and maybe there's even War Wagon here. And War Wagons actually move quite slow, even though they're supposed to be like a cav unit. They're quite slow. And now Red's doing the right, the right thing, which is just mixing archers and skirmishers. Now one thing I'd recommend here if you're an archer player is to not do a very huge boom. Red's next step should be Imperial Age. It doesn't really make sense to try and go for like a heavy castle age because your units are very cheap with mines. And even if you go for eagles, you still want to get that faster imp. It's much better than having a big eco. So the one thing I'd recommend is once you're at like, you know, 80 villagers, he's at 96 right now, start considering Imperial Age. And you can feel free to use the market. Feel the, use the market and try to make your way to Imperial Age if you're an archer civ because the archer techs in Imperial Age are so, so strong. And you don't really need that big castage eco to afford them either. So, especially with mines who have even cheaper units than the already cheap archers and helps, for example. All right, a lot of wagons are being massed, and Blue has one more shot to win the game, which is actually going to be a forward castle, but it's not forward enough. Again, he's not committing. He needs to really go like as far forward as possible and get a castle down. This is kind of a half-assed one where it's going to control the gold and a bit of space, but not really do any damage to Red's economy. And that's even saying that like we're assuming that Blue's going to even win this fight. And I think if Red focuses the wagons first, he'll have success in the fight. However, he's taking a very, very, very poor trade now. Only now focusing the skirms on the wagons. And now using the crossbows to snipe some of the villagers. Pretty good trade now from Red. And Red should come out on top in this fight, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So it was looking a bit dicey there. Red started out taking kind of a troll fight. But in the end, he's going to get his, his stuff sorted and absolutely take care of Blue's army here. Alright, next step for Blue here. His gold at the back is that his wood. His wood ran out. He does have a stone here that he can make use of. I notice he's got a lot of stone in the bank. He's literally his castle. And maybe what could be good, so if I can give Blue some advice, is if you want to go for some sort of push like War Wagons, exactly, you need some siege to go along with it to cover the weakness that it has to skirms. Um, so War Wagons, siege, that's a very strong composition against mines. And he can still win this game if he goes for a forward castle and his opponent makes a lot of mistakes. Because his opponent, the biggest mistake that Red's been doing, and he's been doing this, or the biggest mistake he's made all game is trying to stay too, too long in castle age here. And he's trying to micro, what he should do is just patrol here. Yeah, just patrol. Patrol and red, red will get a decent trade, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty decent trade. Uh, albeit not amazing though, the wagons are very tanky. He's instead gonna run away, yeah. At this point, just go full full skirms. No need for any possible. Full skirm and pick up the Imperial Age. A prime sub from Casey Brought 12 gigabytes. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And now we're going to see more ranges being dropped down. So it looks like he's going to consider some skirmishers and even more skirmishers. What do you guys think? Do you guys think he should switch to plume archers now or just stick with skirmishers and maybe go for like eagles or something like that? He has a few options available to him and I think a few would be pretty decent. But as you can see, Blue is actually up to Imperial Age. And Red, I called it for a while. Okay, he's now up to Imperial Age. I do think he spent too long in the castle age, but he's now up and he'll be okay. But I, I feel like Blue has a chance. If Blue if Blue goes for a forward castle, gets a few traps in position, and Red doesn't kind of respond perfectly, you know, it, it could be pretty dicey for Red. A common mistake I see very often here is as soon as players click to the Imperial Age, they stop making villagers. I don't know what it is for you guys that you think you only need villagers up to a certain point, but there's absolutely no reason that Red should not be making villagers here. He's not a 200 pop. He doesn't have like a crazy amount of villagers that you'd want to stop. 
And I'm sure you've heard casters and other players say that mines don't need a lot of villagers to function. But my theory is, if you're not pop capped, you should just turbo with any production you can that makes sense, villagers and army, and get to 200 pop as fast as possible. Villagers are only 50 food. If you have, if you've made too many of them, you can use them to take risky resources on the outside. You can use them to expand your base and then just delete them when you're done with them. They're only 50 food. It's not really a big loss long term. And you you get more resources in the short term by making those villagers now. Because like if you made the villagers in the past five minutes, he'd probably be at like 130 bills. And they'd already have paid back for themselves. They'd already have paid back for themselves and he would just have more population. So something to consider there. So I think let's do an, let's do a chat poll real quick, just a, a, a you know a numbers poll. Type a one in the chat if you think that red player should go plumes after the skirmishers, or if you switch the eagles, type a two if you want to see eagles. For now, he's gonna go pure skirmishers, which is a pretty reasonable upgrade or opening. Sorry. So let me know if you want to see plumes here from the red player, or if you want to see some eagles. He'll get the Hutu javelins, get town patrol, an upgrade I don't really recommend by the way. It's too expensive and it costs gold. Never never get this one. Um, but uh, I, I will say both are viable. Both are viable, plumes or eagles. So I, I'll answer now. Plumes or eagles are both viable. However, personally, against Koreans, I think you want to go eagles here because eagles do much better, generally speaking, against wagons. They do much better to raid, and plumes die to like wagons. They die to skirmishers. So while plumes can probably still work, I, I would actually just prefer eagles here every time. So definitely something to consider here. And that's the decision making that you have to make in game. So by making this decision while we watch, me and you guys, the next time we're in a similar situation with mines against Koreans, which could happen, just try to remember this and and try to make similar decisions as to what we're making here uh, while watching the game. And that's the whole idea behind the series Guest Elo and, um, and just watching games in general is to be able to learn from it, take a lesson and, and try to do better in our own games. Well, it looks like Red doesn't need to take a lesson. He's already going for the Eagles right away. So very, very good decision making from Red player. And he's going to use his Trebs to trap down the castle from Blue. And Blue's done a really good job of pushing, by the way. He's got his Trebs forward. He has way less villagers, but he's also expanded quite a well. I assume he's going to be taking more of the resources that are pretty much extra. And he's got villagers in the corner doing absolutely nothing. But I don't know what he can do against these skirmishers to try absolutely dominating the Magnals here with the double, uh, the double shot there. And I love how aggressive Red is playing with the skirms. Like he's just going to town, and you see him now adding villagers. Very good. And he can you can add those earlier. Get, get the 200 pop, guys. Get the 200 pop. It's so good. Send 10 villagers. Go take this. Go take the gold later. No problem. No problem. If you lose those, no problem. All right. So it looks like both players will lose the castle at the front. And Red's trading his few skirmishers now for gold units from blue, so it's actually a really good trade, even if he's not completely destroying the fights. Even though I'd actually argue that he's doing quite well with these skirmishers. And the Hutu skirmishers are not overpowered, but they're quite strong and they trade really well against pretty much everything, and Siege included. So yeah, really, really reasonable damage here and, and value from these skirmishers. And he's just preparing for the Eagle power play behind this. He needs to get Eldorado and finish up the upgrades, and he should be able to absolutely wipe out blue once the Eagles come onto the field. All right, Blue's gonna have to retreat, and once again, he's on the retreat. I don't like that he just selects everything and goes back, and then they move so slowly. Oh, God. And yeah, the, the skirm choice from Red, man, it's just been so good. I, I really, really like how Red's been playing it, and the decent micro here. If he splits, I'm gonna cry. Okay, he didn't go for the split here, but that would've been really clean, though. But he seems to know, some, you know, know his way around the micro, and that's pretty, pretty, pretty solid there. Really good move from blue. He sees the castle immediately from red, and he's just gonna go ahead and trap it down. And I think, I think he can two shot this, if not one shot it. And boom, he one shots it. And red loses the castle for free here. And red, those are three traps on a hill. Nothing, no joke there. Red goes. Oh, there we go. There we go. Eldorado's coming out. Castle forward, taking the gold, and these are the extra villagers I'm talking about. Imagine if he was 140 vills. He can be doing it with the stone, with the, with the wood, anything. You just get so many more resources if you can get the vill count up. And then you can just put them in risky situations after. So if you lose them, it's fine because you have extra villagers. Because as you guys know, mines only really need like 110 to 120 villagers to, uh, to afford all their uh, units in Imperial Age because they, you know, they have a reasonably cheap army. 
All right, so now, you know, you've got all the upgrades for the Eagles. I want to see you actually start popping them out and producing them. He's got the last armor upgrade, which is really the most important one for Elite Eagles after the Unique Tech and Elite Eagle upgrade. And after that, he's only going to be missing the last attack upgrade. So I think it's a good time to start spamming the Eagles and really just trying to raid your opponents and wipe out his army. And Red's been doing a good job of trying to take the gold here, but he might lose this castle since he's not really protecting it. But the Eagles are coming out, so that should be a really nice cleanup here. Yep, I want to see this fight. Oh, big stretch. It's early morning for me, so I'm still waking up myself. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, everyone who's coming into the stream. And uh, a little bit of a housing issue here for Red as he tries to stonewall some parts of the map. Get some houses down. He actually knows about this. Red knows that this is here. Like, this is what Red sees, and he's not really addressing it, which is a bit weird. But he's now sending the eagles out there, which is very good. Scrims in the front, again, making pretty much short work of anything. Mine scrims will beat anything in late game that's ranged. I'm pretty sure that's a pretty solid statement to make. Because they actually beat skirmishers. They do pretty well against Siege Onagers, even. Like, these skirmishers are really, really strong. They, they do decent things against Siege Onager, which is crazy to say. Um, because they are trash at the end of the day. So if you trade, like, 40 skirmishers versus, like, 2 or 3 Siege Onagers, or even 1 Siege Onager, that's actually a decent trade. And you can one-shot with 30 skirms. How much HP does the Siege Onager have? I think it has 75 HP. So with 40 skirms, you can one-shot Siege Onager, for example. All right, this castle's under fire. He did get the HP upgrade, which is so good, dude. I'm thinking these guys are 1300 right now. I don't want to be raising the yellow too high because I do remember that they made quite a few mistakes, but they also did a lot of good things. And Red is expanding on the side. I swear to God, this guy is like listening to some of the, the things I uh, I teach a lot of the time. I swear to God, Red is actually watching the stream. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a subscriber because his build that was clean. And I know I'm not the only guy that like does educational content or teaches a game and there's a lot of ways to learn but he did like the exact steps i recommend he got the 200 pop in imperial age he got outposts on the side in the imperial age um his army composition was one gold unit one uh one one gold unit one trash unit he turbined to 200 pop like i said and his early game builder was also very clean so red we can all take a lesson from it and from his gameplay here Really, really solid, really consistent way of playing. Blue, on the other hand, went for a little bit something a little bit more funky. Tried to go for like an all-in play. I would want to see more commitment to the all-in play from Blue. I think he kind of half-assed it and didn't go, you know, didn't go for the for the for the jugular. He kind of he kind of played it too passive and gave Red the time he needed to get to the composition and to ultimately close out the game here in Imperial Age in pretty good fashion. So. GG, we'll take a look at the statistics real quick. There's the KD. Actually, Blue comes out with a better KD. So something to work on for Red is the army control and the micro fights. But Red's macro was just way better and he had more population and more villagers throughout the entire game. All right, now is the moment we've all been waiting for. I got to see their ELOs. But before I see, I have to guess their ELOs. I'm going to say 1300. 1300 final answer. I want to see what you guys have to say. Type it in chat what you guys think this game is. Let me know. I see some 1500s. I see 1300s. I'm going to get some water in the meantime. All right, guys. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. We've got our guessing statistics. We're going to start with the blue player. Blue player is 1384. It's over. We won. Let's see if the cherry on top, if red can land at 1300. He's 1428. But we still win because all I need to do is guess one player. And I did guess one player. Blue is 1384 with 250 wins and 235 losses. So quite a nice intermediate game. And Calvin says these guys are so pepega. But I promise you that this is what your gameplay looks like if you're around this ELO. It's just so much easier to judge other people than your own gameplay. Uh, and let's take a look here for uh, the red player. 130 wins, 112, 112 losses. I really like how Red played it. He played such good fundamentals. Such good fundamentals there for Red. Man, guys, these guys, the Elos, they drain my, my voice. They absolutely drain my voice. I really hope you guys enjoy them because they're very hard for me to make, actually. I don't know how people cast. Maybe I just talk too much, but they absolutely drain my voice to do that.